Well, Doctor, uh, we, we are at a disadvantage in that uh, we always have to wait for information to filter out of uh, Myanmar. Uh, can you tell us, are we getting the full picture? Or are we getting an accurate picture of what's happening in Myanmar? Or are there things that we are not hearing or not seeing that we should be seeing? Are there, are there stories that should be played some more? Are there stories that are underplayed or overplayed? Can, can you give us uh, an idea? I mean, right now, the problem is that 54 million people are living under fear in my country, Myanmar. And secondly, uh, today it can be the day when they will kill, kill me. Yeah? Today can be the day when my mom will be arrested. Today can be the day when my dad will be arrested. Today, is the day, today may be the day when my daughter, my brother, my sister will be killed. So it's like the smoky guns in the doorsteps. They are pointing and on the high and they are, they are doing this, uh, even snipers on the high, aiming to kill shoot to kill. So I mean all the country are under siege, as I said. They turn the country into chaos. That means that, uh, you know, our neighbors, our friends, our family, we are the family, ASEAN, as 10 members, we are 10 members of the family. And this is happening. It seems to us that our neighbors, our friends, our family members are closing their eyes so that they will not see it and closing their ear so that they will not hear it. So the people of Myanmar are crying and dying. So I think it's the time for our neighbor and the world to hear the voice of the suffering of the people of Myanmar. So how would you assess, you mentioned ASEAN, how would you assess the response of ASEAN and the individual countries right now? It has been some very unfortunate. Again and again, some of our ASEAN friends are continue to stand with the military junta which is illegal and illegitimate. Mm. It's not the will of the people of Myanmar. Mm. So all our ASEAN friends, we are calling them to stand with the people of Myanmar, not again with illegitimate and illegal military-led governments. Mm. That means that some of the country, again, they think that it's eternal problem. No more eternal problem. It's all the original problem. Mm. In a family, we are 10 people living together. Mm. If one is behaving bad, killing its own people, declare the war on its people, that means that the nine friends, the nine family members have the responsibility to protect the children of that person mm. who is killing own children. It's very simple. It's very common sense. Mm. So we are asking all the country in Asia, our friends, our dear neighbors, to please stand with the people of Myanmar. Yes. not again with this illegitimate and illegal military council. Hmm. But uh, we, we have some experience with the exiled government, uh, you know, uh, prior to, to the reform uh, age that, that allowed the NLD back into uh, mainstream politics in, in Myanmar. And if we look back at that history, we were discussing it earlier. ASEAN, as you know, is very conservative. We work by consensus. It works very, very slow. Uh, the member countries have gone as far as to say that uh, the elections should, should be respected, but as you said, not a categorical backing of the elected parliament as the real government. What is the implications beyond Myanmar? Given our history in ASEAN of slow moving, move by consensus, the ASEAN way, and so on, what beyond Myanmar, what is the implications for ASEAN if, as you said, this family does not take a position on this particular trouble in Myanmar? This is very simple. These military generals, they are in any country, Asia or Myanmar, it doesn't matter, really. They are putting ASEAN into shame in front of the world. That means that we cannot effort by this small number of people putting ASEAN into shame on the stage of the world. It's the 21st century. The people must realize that uh, it's no time for words, it's time for actions. That means that if we are going to behave like that again and again, no one in the world is going to respect us, ASEAN, anymore. I think we cannot lose. We cannot effort to lose the respect that we need to have as ASEAN country. That means that we have to make decisive actions when necessary. Whenever there's emergency, we have to act quickly. And 
immediately, no waiting and seeing what happened. So I think that this is uh, putting Asia, it, uh, taking Asia backward. If we have got stable neighbor and prospering neighbor and thriving neighbor, that's much better to have uh, the, the, than this kind of uh, military generals who are killing its own people. This is a criminal act. It's a crime against humanity. It's not just uh, something, uh, something went wrong. It is about crime against humanity. So uh, unfortunately, these generals of military regime has committed crime against humanity times and times again. 1962, they have committed the same crime against humanity. 1988, they have committed crime against humanity. Again, 1997, once with the students. Again, in 2007, with the monk. Killing the monks on the street is a crime against humanity. And with Rohingya people, yeah, in 2017, they have killed, uh, they have pushed uh, almost one million people to the sea and killed many of them. Now it's happening again. So ASEAN has the responsibility to come to, to stand where the truth is. So they cannot stand again and again covering these generals who have committed crime against humanity. If they still stand with them, they will be blamed in history. The history will charge us harshly.